So I think in my opinion, there are just two scenarios in which the sunscreen is going to easily, conveniently work for you. Number one, if you're an office worker who is always sitting under the AC during summers. In winters, the sunscreen will work for you if only if and only if you're using water-based products, be it serum or moisturizer or moisturizing gel, whatever, it should only be water-based and it should not have oils uh, like uh, in a significant quantity in them. Okay, let me make one thing very clear right away in the beginning. I bought this sunscreen towards the end of uh, winters, probably in Jan or Feb. And Jan, Feb here, I, I don't know whether it was Jan or was it Feb. It was somewhere around that time, maybe even before, and it was proper winter. So I just want to say that I've used this sunscreen in winters, winters transitioning into summers, early summers, and right now what we're experiencing, like the proper heat of summers. So I've really tested this sunscreen and I have tried to comprehensively observe it and come here and share my review with you. I really desperately want to share my review with this, about this sunscreen with you because, um... Like, I don't know why uh, none of the influencers who are really promoting this sunscreen have not talked about the downsides of the sunscreen. Like, I don't know, how come they did not experience the downsides of the sunscreen? Just for your uh, convenience, since the video I am sure is going to be lengthy, um, I'll divide this video into six parts. The first one being why I bought this sunscreen, second being uh, looking at the ingredients list, third will be the reapplication quotient, fourth will be the pros and cons of this sunscreen, fifth will be my pro tips like how to work your way with using this sunscreen and sixth will be conclusion. Okay, let's begin. So sunscreens in my opinion are something worth geeking into. Because unlike wash off products like face washes, sunscreens are something which stay on our skin. They are therapeutic in the sense like how much, how efficiently they protect our skin from the sun. The sun's rays cause aging damage. This is very slow, but persistent and very hard to reverse. Um, I don't know if you can reverse this with Botox or laser. I don't know. I really have no information about it. In case you do, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. So yeah, that damage is very hard to reverse with the use of, you know, these cosmetic products. So sunscreens are a much uh, more important player in our uh, skincare routine as compared to something like a face wash. Now the minimalist SPF 60 PA4 Pluses Vala sunscreen is marketed as the sunscreen with silymarin. Silymarin I think is supposed to be an antioxidant, but I will not be talking much about silymarin because I did not you know, experience the goodness or anything regarding silymarin from this sunscreen, to be honest. Like, you know, you feel like, okay, oh, this sunscreen has some antioxidant benefits. I didn't feel that. So I'm not going to be talking about it. Third reason is nobody buys this sunscreen because of silymarin. Do you? Were you about to buy it because of the silymarin? No, sunscreens are bought based on their SPF ratings and their PA ratings. SPF measures how much UVB protection this sunscreen is going to give you and the PA ratings or the boot star rating tells you how much of UVA protection this thing gives you. Caucasian skins are easy to burn, you know, they, but unlike uh, but Indian skin tones, we don't burn that easily. Instead, what we face is the UVA rays. So the UVB rays are the rays which cause burning and the UVA rays are the ones which cause, cause aging, um, you know, uneven tanning, hyperpigmentation. Yes. Uh, if you're using AHAs, DHAs or vitamin A and you go into the sun without any sunscreen, you would obviously burn. If you've been through this, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, it's never recommended though that you go into the sun bare-faced while using uh, treatment products. But in case it has happened with you due to whatever reason, then you know what I'm talking about. So uh, we Asian skin tones are more susceptible to the UV rays, generally speaking. And the UV rays are the ones which cause tanning in our skin and hyperpigmentation. Uh, if, you know, those are your skin issues, like you're very concerned about uneven tanning or hyperpigmentations, PIH and all, then it's very important for you to make sure that your sunscreen has a good amount of UVA protection. So that was my criteria when I was looking out for a sunscreen. And this sunscreen kind of fit 
exists in that category because in by today's standards a good uva protection is what how would you know that a sunscreen has good uva protection it should have a pa rating of at least four stars three stars is like bygone era now it's about four stars okay and uh, it should at least have that so this sunscreen had that and um, I think price wise also it was falling in the mid range neither too expensive and not too cheap so it was it was like a good balance and obviously it's from the minimalist so obviously i mean minimalist has such a good um, brand image and yeah so coming back to the uva protection now this sunscreen has a boot star rating of 3 3 is on the lower spectrum because boot star mein you can get a rating Uh, either I think you don't get a rating. It says not enough protection of UVA as compared to UVB protection in the sunscreen. Um, but three is on the lowest range because maximum you can get five star and minimum you can get three star. So three is on the low range. I did not know that much about the boot star rating while purchasing this sunscreen, but now I know about it. And specifically, like if you go and geek out on the ingredients list, you will also realize that there are some ingredients which are protecting against UVA. but there aren't probably as many as there could have been i'll tell you something if you look at sunscreens um you will especially like till a few years ago you will find they have good spf rating so i used to find that uh, those sunscreens have good spf rating and they also have ingredients uh, which will protect you from the uvb rays but somehow those sunscreens despite having even pa triple plus they did not have enough of uva protection like the neutrogena mineral sunscreen for example i think all of us would have used it um pehle there weren't all these new brands and all with all all these sunscreens pehle there was just i think lotus neutrogena and lakme so yeah and maybe jovis i don't know never tried that um yeah so yeah they didn't have good uh, uva protection so dheere dheere you know we are coming to the point where we are getting much better at having uva protection in our sunscreens so it was a big criteria for me uh, because i deal with tanning and hyperpigmentation issues so i wanted a sunscreen which should have good the best in fact uva protection possible i'm highlighting the sunscreen ingredients used in the sunscreen here this shows you what all sunscreen agents are used and in which order indicating the amount of quantity used You may pause the video and have a look. I suggest all those of you interested in having a close look at the ingredients to visit the INCI decoder website where each ingredient is written about in detail. Yes, Uvinyl A+ gives protection against the aging UVA rays and can be used up to a 10% concentration in a product. Uvinyl P150 can be used up to 5% concentration in a product and is a UVB filter. Tinosorb S is a broad spectrum UVA and UVB filter which is very favored as it also hardly deteriorates in the presence of UV light. Titanium dioxide gives UVA and UVB protection and is the only physical sunscreen in this product. physical sunscreens typically leave you with the typical white cast which is why dark skin tones don't like it and prefer sunscreens with chemical filters so though in india titanium dioxide in a sunscreen can be used up to a percentage of 25% here we see the sunscreen agent very low on the ingredients list reflecting that the concentration used is extremely low I think it's lower than even 5%. If you geek at the ingredients list and do a bit of math, you too will realize the same. I can't really say that the brand should have used a higher percentage of sunscreen agents because they probably added the maximum percentage as possible without leaving a white cast. Okay, now that we've discussed why I bought this sunscreen and the ingredients, let's talk about the reapplication quotient and the texture. So definitely this sunscreen has a texture which is not easy to work with. If you're using this on a a heavy moisturizer which has oils in it, then the sunscreen will ball up. So it's a problem in winters because in winters we tend to use more heavier or more like occlusive sort of products, more emollients. So I found that in winters this sunscreen was balling up. And um, other than that, if I would just use water-based products on my skin, under the sunscreen then yes reapplication during winters was 
much more smoother at least twice or thrice a day i could reapply now if you're having problems in reapplying like if you feel like the product feels too heavy when you're going to reapply you can just splash your face with a bit of water um you know like how you wash your face you can do that and then reapply the sunscreen um same goes for if you have oily or greasy skin just um before reapplication just wash your face with water and then you can go ahead and reapply now if you don't have oily skin you have like normal or drier skin and you're sitting indoors say you're an office worker so you're sitting in the ac for like 8 hours a day um then yeah i don't think reapplication is any problem at all but if you're a field worker um you know there are thousands of jobs which are actually field jobs suppose you're in the police you're in the traffic police you're a civil engineer you're a firefighter i don't know you could be anything um which makes you stay out in, in the sun and those are also real jobs right and um, whatever makes you stay out in the sun in this heat of summers like this sunscreen can possibly be a disaster for you like let me share a clip that i shot today itself So you can see in the clip that my skin is sweating and as my skin is sweating the water droplets are coming out of my skin like the sweat droplets as well as the sunscreen uh, is starting to show up in the form of like white something like the white thing of the sunscreen is also coming out So if you ask me whether I can reapply this sunscreen during summers no not really not without washing my face before reapplying because otherwise the sunscreen just feels so heavy and so sweaty on my skin Okay so now let me tell you some pros about the sunscreen. So first is that it has a PA rating of 4 pluses. Second is uh, which can be a con or a pro depends how you look at it. Uh, the it has a boot star rating of 3. Some of you might think but 3 is on the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, I totally get it. So that's kind of up to you whether you think that a boot star rating of 3 is good enough or not. Uh, third is that the sunscreen decently protects you, uh, protected me from tanning and hyperpigmentation if I was able to wear it properly. So I'll tell you the way I try to wear it properly in my pro tips section. Next is that the sunscreen is free of silicones and fragrance. So fragrance can sometimes be annoying. So it's just better. to not have fragrance and yes it can potentially irritate your skin so yeah again it's better to just not have fragrance in the skin care then silicones i feel that silicones all the more tend to ball up especially when they are not when the product they are in is not extremely well formulated so i just prefer to not have silicones in any of my products the sunscreen did not interfere with my acne so even if i apply it on my acne acne uh, it didn't aggravate the acne and it didn't do anything it didn't sting or it didn't do anything on the acne and uh, i was also about, uh, able to apply the sunscreen around my eyes and even on my eyes uh, unlike other sunscreens which tend to sting you around the eyes now let's talk about the cons number 1 this sunscreen is not waterproof or sweat proof Number 2 this sunscreen feels very heavy on the skin in summers and even if you don't normally have skin which would sweat this sunscreen makes your skin sweat number 3 the balling up problem see this sunscreen balls up randomly unpredictably even if i apply it on top of water based products it can ball up any day or it may not i mean it's just unpredictable then it may ball up on the reapplication it's just very unpredictable so i don't like that yes especially if you're using the sunscreen on oil based products or any product which has oil in it then definitely this sunscreen will ball up this sunscreen is not for field workers 
ओके देर हैव बिन डेज वेन ड्यू टू बींग टू स्ट्रेस टू डिप्रेस टू टायर्ड टू लेजी और टू वट एवर आई कुड नॉट वॉश माई फेस बिफोर गोइंग टू बेड नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग आई वेक अप विद सिबेशियस फिलिमेंट्स ऑल ओवर माई नोज यू कैन जस्ट गूगल वॉट सिबेशियस फिलिमेंट्स आर बट I get these like bumpy textures on my nose and which are very annoying they are like little grains and they are very annoying and the way I have to deal with them is like by using different gel different gel on my face uh on my nose on the subsequent night in order to get rid of those uh filaments so yeah that's I'm not saying that it's a healthy habit to go to bed with sunscreen on your face but sometimes life is unpredictable it happens and when it does then you shouldn't be waking up with such bad skin in the morning at least okay at some point in summers you will have to wear something like a loose powder on your face on top of this sunscreen in order to prevent the sweating now that's a con because loose powders i or any compact powders or anything uh, can potentially clog your pores even further so if you have oily skin or you have sweaty skin this sunscreen can prove to be a disaster for you in summers that's a con now let me give you a few pro tips regarding how you can work better with this sunscreen So if you've decided to put your money and time on this sunscreen then keep these things in mind. When you apply the sunscreen, don't try to massage it too much into your skin. Spread it evenly and wait for it to settle in on its own. It doesn't take more than a minute or two. Always use oil-free products under this sunscreen. You can use water-based products or you can use a gel moisturizer or absolutely nothing under this sunscreen. because frankly even sunscreens are moisturizers they are basically sunscreen agents dissolved in a moisturizing base if the sunscreen feels heavy on your skin or if you have oily skin then you can always wash your face before the reapplication now regarding the sweatiness and the increase in oiliness which the sunscreen causes on your face what you can do is you can use a loose powder or anything like that so i'm not into makeup so i wouldn't really know what all other products exist in the market but i basically use the maybelline fit me uh loose powder the shade i use is light medium 20 um and most of the time it will work so what i do is after i've applied the sunscreen i've allowed it to settle in a bit then i just uh, take the powder and apply it on especially my t zone because that's where i tend to sweat uh, the most in case you're using a moisturizer under this sunscreen i would say that just wait for like 10 minutes before you apply the sunscreen Just check out this product's reviews on the Be Minimalist website itself. It's got 3.5 stars. That is so apt because this product really is a 3 to 3.5 out of 5 star product. So I had bought this product when it was launched. I was very excited to try it and I had purchased it almost immediately from the Be Minimalist website. At that time this product did not have a 3.5 star rating else definitely it would have come under my notice. So yeah anyways upon observing this recently on the website I decided to visit amazon uh, dot in and there too i found that though the product somehow has managed to uh, bargain a four star rating but when you go to the reviews oh my god it's all there it is all there people have said it all and i was so surprised and i felt actually so validated because uh, to be honest uh, while making this review video i was a bit i was very underconfident about my own review i was like maybe i'm the one you know just ki skin pe ye suit nahi kar raha hai or maybe i i just don't know how to work with this product maybe something's not right with my skin because a uh, very i think a uh, good so she is a good reviewer or skin care youtuber in my opinion and she has raved about this product in fact there are two of them and those those are very good skincare youtubers 
and they have raved about the texture of this product that it leaves no white cast there's no pilling and it just goes on so smoothly on the face there's nothing and it's so good so one of those uh, youtubers is also currently really raving about the dr shades uh, sunscreen and also giving out a discount code for it so yeah do let me know that you know if a prolific skincare youtuber someone whom you trust and someone whose videos you like is someone you will actually trust versus the reviews on amazon so if you were to choose between the two before buying a product which one would you choose would you go with the um uh, amazon reviews which say that the product is doing this and that or would you instead prefer the skincare youtuber who is giving out a discount code and also saying that this is a brilliant sunscreen or a brilliant xyz product I don't know how come they those people they are also humans and I'm sure they also live in hot or humid climates and I'm surprised how they've not come across this thing how come they've not faced the same issues that I and so many other people as you can see on the Amazon reviews have faced with and uh, it, minimalist is a sought out brand it's a sought after brand and i just feel like it's so important to not only highlight the pros of a product but also the cons right i mean that's what you're supposed to do as a influencer or a skincare reviewer right if i was also like rest of the skincare reviewers then this is how my video would have looked it would have shown you a smooth happy process of application of this sunscreen it would have shown you how nice and smooth the texture of this sunscreen is but hey i'm here to tell you the truth and sadly my camera could not capture the truth but then that also highlights the point that everything that you see on camera cannot 100% be believed because it does not show you the 100% truth so i don't know whether it is a shortcoming of the lighting in my house or is it the camera that i'm using which is not the best i'm just using an android my android phone for recording this and it just did not capture the little balls that formed after applying the sunscreen i tried really hard but i just couldn't capture them okay let me make one thing very clear right away in the beginning i bought this sunscreen towards the end of uh, winter probably in jan or feb and jan feb here I, i don't know whether it was jan or was it feb it was somewhere around that time maybe even before and it was proper winter so i just want to say that i've used this sunscreen in winters winters transitioning into summers early summers and right now what we're experiencing like the proper heat of summers so i've really tested this sunscreen and i have tried to comprehensively observe it and come here and share my review with you So I think in my opinion there are just two scenarios in which this sunscreen is going to easily conveniently work for you. Number 1 if you're an office worker who is always sitting under the AC during summers. In winters this sunscreen will work for you if only if and only if you're using water based products be it serum or moisturizer or moisturizing gel whatever it should only be water based and it should not have oils uh, like uh, in a significant quantity in them that is when the sunscreen will beautifully work for you um next thing is that the boiling up is unpredictable so the texture of the sunscreen is definitely not the greatest because i think that is what what causes the boiling up so yeah that and then at some point you will have to use a loose powder on your skin uh while using this sunscreen i think most probably in summers you're going to need that because even if you are an office worker or something um, you might some day have to go out into the sun maybe for a picnic or a beach um you know at the beach side or something like that you know it's totally possible and at that point when the sun hits your face and 
you start feeling a bit hot this sunscreen is going to make you sweat and then the only way for this for you to make this sunscreen work in my opinion is to use a loose powder so that it will prevent your skin from sweating and the sunscreen from coming off lastly the booth star rating is 3 and uh, the range is from 3 to 5 so it's your call whether you think that the uva protection provided by this sunscreen is enough or not uh in my opinion it's moderate it's moderate and that totally reflects in the boot star rating i insist that if you want to geek out on the ingredients list and figure things out for yourself go to the inci website um and just check out the ingredients and you'll get to know you know how much uva protection this one is actually providing I hope this video was able to shine some light on the reality of this sunscreen. Um yeah, that was my humble effort through this video. In case you like this video, let me know in the comments. It really helps me and uh, click on the like button and also hit the bell icon so that you get notifications whenever I post a video. Bye.